Is it okay? Yeah. Is my glasses crazy? No. Okay, let's focus on your face. It is very bright. Today is not going to be a vlog. No. It's going to be like an update. Yeah. Because we've been gone for... The last time we vlogged was... That last Saturday? Saturday. So... The 12th. Yeah, over a week. We posted on the 13th was the last time we posted. So this is going up 10 days since our last post. Wow, that's crazy. The longest we have not vlogged since we started the Burkhart Project over two years ago. Yeah. We're going to try to get back into daily vlogging as of today into yes. tomorrow. Um, we might miss a day here and there. We're just going to start up again and see how everything goes and just do our best. What? Sorry, I keep looking over. <laughs> so if you can't tell... We're on a new couch. We got a new. We got a couch, and the most massive couch we've ever had. Crazy. Um, pretty much, this is what I wanted when we got our couch in Florida when we moved down here two years ago. Yeah. But we got that little dinky couch. Yes. Um, but so it was a good, a good. Thing. Eve is all, like Eve's, all the way over there. Eve's so far from us, but I'm just making sure she's not chewing anything or she's not doing yeah. anything. But it's a really comfy couch, and we're super happy to have it. But let's. It's some major retail therapy. Yeah, a big major piece of retail therapy. So the last time you guys saw us was Saturday. Peter had his 5K. Um, it was just a weekend. We were taking it easy. Um, the next day is kind of when things got a little bit more serious with our situation. Before that vlog, we had talked about how I was going to be taking it easy. Um, the doctors had let us know that although our baby was okay, that there was a blood clot alongside it. And um, I just had to take it super easy. They upped some of my medicines. Well, on Sunday, things progressed a bit. Um, we were told that we should come in if anything seemed more serious than it was before. We emailed our nurses, and they're like, well, we need you to come in first thing tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and it was awesome that they were able to get us in that fast, and they could not find the heartbeat. Um, Anybody else who wouldn't, like, I just am so grateful. Like, this whole situation is the absolute opposite of what we wanted to happen. Um, however, we just feel really fortunate the way that everything played out and all of the help and support we've had since it happened. So they got us in right away. A lot of pe people go through very similar situations than us, and they don't even know that things have taken a turn for the worse and they just continue to live their lives. For instance, two days after we found out that the baby had stopped growing, Sarah's symptoms stopped. Mm -hmm. So if we hadn't, if we hadn't been like, hmm, on that Sunday, like, hmm, we should email them, we should contact them, like, we should tell them about what's going on um, and let them know. If we didn't do that, mm -hmm. we could have been sitting here until yesterday yeah, thinking that everything was fine. Everything was looking better. Yeah. Really, for like, because I had started having my symptoms while we were in Chicago, like I was monitoring them very closely. And so for them to just stop, it was really kind of bizarre. But had we not gone in and found out that um, the baby was no longer growing, there was no longer a heartbeat, um, we might have, you know, we might have thought differently. We might have just carried on. And so it was nice that we were able to prepare ourselves for the worst. So when we went in after Sarah got back from Chicago and we had, she was having those symptoms, we went in and heard our baby's heartbeat. That's when our baby was measuring perfectly six six weeks, four days. Mm -hmm. And when we went in and they didn't find a heartbeat, that should have been about what seven days, three days, seven or seven weeks, seven three weeks, days, three days, yeah. But our baby was measuring six weeks, five days. Yeah. And Sarah and I have been talking over the past two weeks as this is as we've been like comprehending this. We felt like we were happy to have heard the heartbeat. Yeah. That it was our baby kind of like giving us a little wave. Like, yeah. It you was can really. Do this, like, I'm here with you. Right. And so it was clear that things had stopped progressing after that. So, really, that was maybe the last day we could have even possibly heard their heartbeat. And so the timing, the way that it lined up, like Peter said, just kind of felt like we did get a sense of peace through that because. We never had to wonder, was their heart ever beating? Were they ever on track? Because we knew that they were. Yeah. And that also gives us a lot of peace of mind moving forward. Because now we know that I can get pregnant. I can sustain a strong pregnancy. My numbers were great. 
the heartbeat was awesome. Their size was perfect. This pesky blood clot just happened to hinder it from yeah, developing from any the longer. Detachment. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of people reached out to us and let us know that they had been through something similar, somebody that they know had been through something similar. And it's a very common thing that happens, especially, well, they say it especially in IVF patients. I hadn't really talked to you about this, but the reason they think it's more common in IVF about this. patients is because IVF patients are monitored more. more in the beginning of pregnancy. So they say, you know, a little bleeding here and there at the beginning of pregnancy is normal. And it is. And it is. It's just interesting because a lot of the times, quote unquote, normal pregnancies, you don't have a, an ultrasound to know that this exact thing could have happened to you, yeah. but you just never saw the ultrasound right. to see that that Usually was the reason why. Spotting's okay, come back at 12 weeks. Yeah. Or if it gets worse, let us know. And if it resolves itself, you would never know, even at that 12 week mark, that you said, like your, the, the uterine sac detached slightly, but then reattached, like what happened to our baby, but right. it didn't reattach. And right. then the blood clot got in the way of it yeah. developing further. So um, again, that's um, a positive thing that we're taking from this. You know, we're, we're hopeful. We are going to continue with treatment as soon as my doctor clears that Which could be can. one to three months from now. Right. Um, depending on what our doctor wants and suggests. Yeah. We're still a part of our study because this was technically, it's basically like a failed transfer. Like we're not bringing a baby home, so therefore it wasn't successful. Yeah. And so we're still a part of that study and we'll move forward. Um, and we're, we haven't had a consultation with our doctor yet to know if anything will change with the protocol, if they'll add anything to the study. So moving forward, it's it's bittersweet that we don't have like our our doctor and our nursing staff. They don't have an answer. Some and that's a, the strange thing about uh, pregnancy, successful and unsuccessful is like there's just not a reason. Sometimes not a rhyme or reason that we don't know why this happened. And yeah, nothing that I did caused this to happen. No, nothing you could have done could have right. prevented it. Right. And um, so, I mean, it's kind of like there's two sides of it. Nothing that we did could have caused it. However, we do have a reason as to why the pregnancy could no longer continue, and that was the blood clot. The blood mm -hmm. clot was just too large, and it just stopped our baby from growing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like, we're kind of finding, like, peace in that. At least it didn't just stop for no reason, but the detachment was for no reason. So it's kind of a give and take yeah. um, right now. And the thing is nobody is an expert at this like we're not um we it's just such like a difficult thing to go through because so many pe other people have gone through it um but there's really no like we can't give much advice we can kind of just share our story so many pregnancies are different yeah so many infertility journeys are different right. and so many there's unsuccessful not pregnancies a textbook are different way of going about this so all that we can say is, is that we're very thankful that um, the way that everything progressed, that we made it to our procedure. Mm -hmm. um, although we did have some scary moments at home, we rested from the minute we found out that, um, that our pregnancy was no longer um, viable. We just like took it so easy because we were determined that we we're going to do everything we could so that the procedure could take place because we did not want the worst to happen at yes. home. And my work was super understanding. From the moment we found out the news, I said, I, you know, I worked remote on Monday waiting till we got into the doctor. I said, I'm going to the doctor. I'll text him. I was talking to my boss. I said, I'll text you with what's going on afterwards. And he said, keep me updated. And when we found out, I texted him back and said, I'm not working today. I'm not working tomorrow. I'll talk to you Wednesday about what's going on. I went into the office Wednesday literally walked in my boss showed up right as i did we went to his office i explained to him everything happened what needs to happen between then and the procedure and i said i'm not I, I can't leave sarah's side just in case the worst does happen at home she needs can't be home alone mm -hmm. so then i worked they let me work the rest of the week from home and i took yesterday off as well yes so i went today was my first day back in the office right and the procedure that i had is called a dnc um really just a fresh start for you know everything on the inside was taken out um 
similar to my egg retrieval where it was just like twilight anesthesia I was out um, but not a lot of recovery time like I feel good already um, more so physically, physically than you know everything else that's on our shoulders um, but overall like I'm cleared to go about life as normal which is really it's like we were waiting for yesterday to happen because we kind of were able to have that closure. We weren't living on edge, you know, worried about what was going to happen. Um, but now, like Peter went back to work today. It's like I'm a weird slowly switch. like getting back into my work. Um, I obviously haven't been editing anything. I haven't really been on social media. So like now it's just like life is supposed to go back to normal. Well, that's, I talked with a few people at work today and it's hard because it goes back to normal, but it's not the normal we used to know. Yeah. We have to find a new normal because we had a baby. We don't have that baby anymore. And like, that's our new normal. Mm -hmm. Like, even though right now compared to three months ago, it's the exact same. When you look at like our life, it's not the exact same. Right. So we need to cope with that and it'll take, you know, we'll carry this the rest of our lives with us. Right. A lot of people go through this. You mm -hmm. know, one in four pregnancies result I in miscarriage. I think more people go through this than infertility. Right. So many people that we know that have multiple children, healthy children, never experience anything um, regarding, you know, infertility treatments. You know, they get pregnant like that. And sometimes it's, I mean, this just happens. So it's nothing that I would wish upon my worst enemy. But it's so... Um, much more common than people, you know, talk about. And mm -hmm. October is actually Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month, so it's like we found out the day before, right? The actual day. October so it's just, 15th. it's just. Um, we have been navigating infertility for almost four years. As of next month was mm -hmm. when we started trying four years ago, um, but we are so new to this world, yeah. And so. Um, we're learning and we learn every day. Right. And I think, you know, we are going to continue to be open, but we also know that it is difficult to talk about it and it's uncomfortable. Um, but we're always open to being an outlet of support for people, mm -hmm. of just being real and going through lives with, going through our lives with you by our side. Um, and just as much as we can help you guys, you help us. And we've had so many people reach out. They know exactly how we're feeling and mm -hmm. whatnot. Um, and so we're going to continue to be vocal, but, you know, we are going to do our best to be ourselves on, um, on the channel still, but things are just going to be a little different. A little different. We're going to carry a little, you want to say about a little sweet pea? Yeah. That's what we've been calling them. Just because that was like the size on the app. Yeah. Um, we were a week, a week away from, like, the next week would have been this, like, the size of an almond. So I think yeah. the first couple of days after we found out No, I think it was going to be a blueberry. A blueberry. I kept yeah. calling it our blueberry. Mm -hmm. And then so I was like, no, it's actually a pea. Like, it was the size of a pea at six weeks, five days. So yeah. um, it's too early to tell if the baby was a boy or girl. Mm -hmm. So we just keep saying that we're going to keep our little sweet pea with us forever. Yeah. Yeah. We did not... Um... I did not know when we were going to feel comfortable coming back. Um, and we I've, I've really needed this week, and I know you have too. Um, but even just the additional, you know, posting and all of that going forward, um, we really needed this. So thank you for being so, so understanding. And supportive. The messages yeah. we've gotten have been incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was only one person who was just like, come back. <laughs> but I think they meant they meant it from a you know a warm place. Yeah. Knowing that they probably that we would probably right. a little bit mm -hmm. of that that scheduling of what we're doing and yeah. going out and and, and we really enjoy what we do on the vlog. I mean, yeah. We love that. So we don't I know, do it for you guys. We do it for us. <laughs> I know that um, that'll help heal us too. Yeah. Um, we just really were rest like we really needed to rest yes. these couple of weeks, and I barely left this apartment yeah. um that's what we needed to do and so we needed to do that so also don't don't be worried that we're pushing ourselves um you know we can go to magic kingdom and just 
sit on a bench and be just as happy. So and we just might this week. Yeah, we're excited to to give back out and um, just to be in our happy place and all of that. So and the rest of our our busy fall just keeps continues. Yeah. In two uh, thirteen days, wine and dine starts. Yeah. Wedding next month. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Christmas. I know. It's Birthdays, wild. anniversaries. Yeah, so it's hard. I wit like we keep on saying, you know, like had this happened earlier in the year, it wouldn't be as difficult to carry on. Like the holidays are always hard for us. Like we love Christmas so much, but like every Christmas that it's we don't have a Christmas. baby is so it is hard. So we like the holidays are hard for a lot of people for a lot of reasons like that. Um, or our, other oh, our birthdays you know. mm -hmm. like we may be able to do a transfer before my birthday but we may not yeah so like I thought you know that was my last birthday mm -hmm. me not being right. a parent and so even though we weren't going to have an actual baby in our arms on Christmas we were just so looking forward to a Christmas season knowing we were and so you know it's not just a baby that that we're losing out on it's whole life the whole life yeah. and like I was I was even thinking like oh my gosh our baby's birthday is gonna be at the end of May so like some years they might be in school some years they might not and they're not gonna be able yeah. to bring candy into their classroom and like you know like yeah. there's that and so it's just like but we are continuing to do something we didn't do before and that's like we're gonna start buying little things here and there yeah. for our children because like the gifts we received already from friends and family when we found out the news about the successful transfer, we have all those, and those are for all of our children, not just this first child. Right. And so, so we're, we're going to start doing yeah, that. We're going to keep doing that. We're going to keep looking. We're going to make the second bedroom into a functioning room. It's not just going to become storage like our second bedrooms it's in the past be have been. A um, second bedroom with flares of a nursery, yeah. so that we can easily. Right. Well, it's going to be planned out with the intention of it, it turning into a nursery. Yeah. And so we do just want to point out that we do not regret sharing. Mm -hmm our news as early as we did if anything it was that much more special that we could celebrate mm -hmm. with, our baby with ourselves and with you guys for as long as we did and also like we we do just want to like not even just like talking about infertility but this whole like tabooness around you know being in the danger zone or not I would prefer to have all of the support that we've had through this miscarriage. I mean, not everybody is as open as we are. And that's okay. Right? Yeah, that's completely we okay. We choose to if be you, that open. If you're not, um, if you're not somebody who wants to grieve in a public manner per se, um, but at the same time, we are so thankful that we didn't have to proceed through life as normal, even though this happened. Yeah. Um, and so that would have been a little bit, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard, but no we, matter have, what, we but have no we're, regrets about it. Yeah, we, Today, work was a little hard. How's your wife? Right. How are you? But you would rather them know that you're going through yeah. it than silently be at your desk and, you know, it just being bottled up. That's right. you. That's me. A hundred percent. I can't, I wear all my emotions <laughs> on my sleeves. Right. So, um, we're just happy that we were able to share with you everything go through those happy times we have you know those vlogs forever to remember mm -hmm. um our children will know about this baby and we're gonna <clears throat> keep trying keep going because it's all we to us that's that's yeah. the only option yeah we recently saw this cool tech talk that was like about moving forward about not moving on yeah. and how like this will continue to shape us we're not going to pretend yeah. like this never happened yeah. um but We'll, we'll, we'll make it through. Yeah. We're still having our ups and downs. Like the day it happened, we were, you know, laughing and singing and playing and still being us. And yeah, all it of comes that, in so. waves like everything does. Mm -hmm. so we've got to put a link down below of the awesome Samwise Gamgee oh, yeah. video. So I don't, we can't put the, <laughs> the clip in because it's too long and it'll get yeah. copyrighted. But please go to the link down below and watch this little, like, minute and a half story from Samwise Gamgee from Lord of the Rings. Sarah and I watched all three extended un untheatrical cut for the first, for the my first, first time, time. Sarah's first time i've been obsessed since they came out in the early yeah. 2000s we took like 14 hours or something and in the middle of the second movie sam goes in this long story about All why the chances that you could have given up why and... the great tales are the great tales <laughs> yeah and literally everything we looking at each other like 
It's just started bawling. We both yeah. just started crying. Yeah. So, so please go check out the video and <clears throat> and think about it for yourselves. Not like for not in our situation, yeah. but listen to Sam and just put that to yourselves because I think it, was, it applies to he anything. He worded it perfectly. Yeah. And that's the thing. At any time in the past four years, we could have turned around and said no and stop. Right. And now we're facing the one, the greatest nightmare that either of us ever thought, like this is the worst thing for Sarah and myself that could ever happen to us. Yeah. And it's right. happened. Right, and we, we went and through <clears throat> the treatments and all our infertility struggles. And when we got that positive test, it was like a switch. Like we were, it was almost like all of that was, you know, I mean, it's still all worth it, but it was just like all of a sudden we knew we were going to have a baby. All of it was, you it know. washed all of it away. Right. And then to get hit with this news, it's like the switch just hit right back. Like but now we're at the all same. This added emotion. To right. It. We're at the same place we were before, you know, besides all of the knowledge and the experiences and everything that we've gained through this. But it's it's just so bizarre to 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 feel the that highest of high that we've been chasing. Mm-hmm. And now to be back. And we'll have that high again. Yeah. And we'll have a little sweet pea carrying with us. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for all you guys' love. <sighs> yeah. It's so humbling and so um, you know, valued by us, so we really do appreciate it. And I won't say we're going to go to the theme parks or anything tomorrow. Yeah. We might, but we're not we going to might, say that. We might, like, we've been really, like, missing out on a lot of the Halloween fun. We're probably not going to go to a Halloween party this year. It's too, <laughs> Just... the, between the prices being high, the sold-off dates, and it being crazy busy, now yeah. that it's so close. Yeah, I just don't think... I'd rather think... double up on a Christmas party. Yeah, I just don't think it'll happen, but um, we still want to go to Fort Wilderness. We yeah. still want to enjoy... Food and wine, so... Maybe I'll sneak in one more HHN. Yeah. Well... We'll see. Yeah, we'll make the most of the rest of this month, and then we'll go from there. It's good to be home. It's good to be home. Thanks for being here with us. We know what our goals are. We know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions.